In the silent corridors of India's premier research labs, one of the most consequential projects in defense science is quietly surging forward, the DRDO's Electromagnetic Railgun, or EMRG. This program has moved from proof of concept to field-ready prototype in just a few years, buoyed by renewed funding and a global race for hypersonic, non-explosive artillery systems. As the world's military giants vie for railgun supremacy, what India develops today has the potential to outstrip legacy technologies across the globe. And only if it can master a series of unique scientific and engineering hurdles that have confounded even the most advanced nations. First, let's dispel any notion that railguns are tomorrow's miracle weapon without precedent. The United States Navy, after 15 years and over $500 million invested, halted its own railgun program in 2021 due to recurring technical bottlenecks. Rail erosion, energy system miniaturization, and operational costs proved insurmountable at the time. Yet the field didn't stand still. General Atomics, the U.S. private defense giant, never abandoned hope. By late 2025, the company had unveiled a new generation railgun design tailored for missile and drone defense, firing hypersonic, precisely guided payloads at speeds of Mach 6 and above, with weapon system integration targeting the Pentagon's next-gen Golden Dome anti-missile initiative. The new prototypes can engage fast-moving ballistic and cruise missiles, with tungsten pellet payloads and airburst programming for maximum effect. China arguably leads the international charge. Its railgun program, operational since at least 2018, put a prototype on the Type 72 III-class ship for at-sea testing, with reports of Mach 7 launches and ranges exceeding 200 kilometers. More recently, Chinese rounds have achieved precision navigation through onboard electronics linked via Beidou satellites, maintaining sub-15-meter accuracy to the target and integrating smart kinetic kill vehicles. Unlike U.S. efforts that wane due to cost and technical hurdles, China's state-directed approach means continuous funding and iterative improvement, aiming for practical naval and land-based deployment for both offense and missile defense. Japan and Europe have accelerated rapidly since 2024. Japan's Ministry of Defense, together with French and German partners, tested a medium-caliber, turret-mounted railgun at a sea target in 2025, using 5 megajoules MJ of charge energy for each shot. The trilateral partnership signed cooperation agreements to commercialize and field this technology in naval and coastal defense roles, and even uses some of the world's most advanced high-frequency semiconductor switches and composite barrel materials developed in the region. So where does DRDO fit into this high-stakes, global contest? India's EMRG program, led by the Armament Research and Development Establishment, ARDE, has leapfrogged stages that typically crippled domestic R&D early lab demonstrators from the 1990s could only accelerate milligram projectiles. Today's systems have demonstrated 1 kg tungsten alloy slugs at speeds over 2,000 meters per second, fired from 45 bores using capacitor banks up to 10 MJ. The program is on track to deliver a prototype capable of 100 MJ, valued for strike ranges up to 400 kilometers for an 18 kg projectile, comparable with any international peer. Let's break down the science. Unlike chemical artillery, a railgun's propellant is pure electricity. Power, often exceeding a million amperes for a brief moment, is dumped into two parallel metal rails. Between them sits a sliding armature, carrying the current and, critically, the projectile. This creates a magnetic field and the Lorentz force, hurling the projectile with staggering acceleration. The issue? Every launch melts, vaporizes, or erodes a little of the rail, each shot inflicting microlevel damage due to extreme localized heating and plasma formation, especially as velocities grow. DRDO's efforts in this area have focused on new multilayer, self-healing copper alloys, high-temperature composite rails, and advanced cooling strategies. Smart diagnostic arrays monitor rail health in real time, forecasting failure points before catastrophic launch errors. Managing pulse power delivery is equally mind-bending. Railguns are not just plugged into a wall socket. They demand capacitor banks, 
pulse-forming networks and innovative energy stores like spinning flywheels and supercapacitors. DRDO's compact, 25-module capacitor power banks, each 400 kJ, can be fielded on truck or trailer platforms, setting the stage for road mobile battlefield artillery and ship or frigate-mountable variants. This packed design, modular and scalable, matches global innovation. Japanese and American systems rely on rapid recharge supercapacitors and software-driven energy management to ensure repeated firing, and India is quickly catching up, leveraging its indigenous semiconductor and power electronics industry. Materials for projectiles themselves have taken a leap. DRDO is testing subcaliber fin-stabilized composite sabots, dense tungsten alloy penetrators, and ablative coatings designed to minimize frictional and electromagnetic heating during the hypervelocity launch. The best U.S. and Chinese designs go further, embedding microelectronics for in-flight correction, autonomous navigation crucial for satellite launch applications, and eventually, integration of AI-driven hunter-killer modes for autonomous threat reaction. DRDO's experimentation with smart projectiles, guided fins, and in-bore sensors reflects these trends. Thermal management is the showstopper for all railgun projects. With repeated cycles of million-ampere surges, each shot generates colossal joule heating at the contact rails, plasma arcs, and around the projectile. This not only risks rail ablation and deformation, but causes rapid fatigue and potential melting. U.S. research has explored active liquid cooling around rails, high-conductivity ceramics, and rail budging sensors. China's emphasis has shifted towards integrated cryogenic barriers and replaceable rail modules. For India, partnerships with its advanced metallurgy and electronics labs are a must, working on next-gen cooling and replacement systems. Already backed by the new CMA LT facility, designed for experimental testing at up to 100 MJ. The global context for railguns isn't limited to weapons. The same electromagnetic launch physics that propel shells can also launch next generation microsatellites, small cargo payloads, or emergency communication arrays, faster and far cheaper than chemical rockets. China and the US are actively researching rail launched, reusable orbital boosters. DRDO's EMRG program is collaborating with Indian space launch startups to explore this dual-use capability. If India perfects rail satellite launch, it will have unmatched strategic flexibility, especially for on-demand low-Earth orbit LEO, deployment after anti-satellite attacks or disasters. Operationally, EMRGs could upend the economics of precision warfare. Unlike missiles, which require expensive propulsion and electronics, a railgun shot is literally a slug of metal, no explosive, little guidance but deadly kinetic energy, and almost zero per shot logistics vulnerability. DRDO envisions the Indian Navy equipped with EMRGs able to intercept inbound missiles, saturate hostile ships at hundreds of kilometers, and deliver rail burst defenses against swarming drone or hypersonic threats. On land, mobile railguns can provide deep, rapid-fire support into hostile territory, with the advantage of fast pulse logistics, no hazardous munitions stockpile, instant readiness, and stealthy, hard-to-jam electromagnetic launch signatures. No powder, no propellant train, no risk of secondary explosions. The obstacles facing DRDO, as elsewhere, remain formidable. Rail lifespan is limited. Current railgun generations are often lab queens, only capable of a few dozen shots before major downtime. Heat transfer, rail shunting, plasma containment, and programmable high-power switching are ongoing research themes globally. Power generation onboard, be it mobile generator trailers or ship power plants, adds complexity. The economics of mass production, materials procurement, and maintenance must match the operational promise. Still, India's approach is becoming a global model. Early, open demonstration of successful firings, rapid upscaling to higher energies with CMA LT and ARDE, transparent collaboration with academic and commercial power electronics sectors, and committed funding for fieldable prototypes. Indian private defense firms, like Kalyani, are entering the fray with parallel EMRG concepts, multiplying competition and technical capacity.
Why are railguns still worth the effort, even as some Western nations pause development? Modern missile threats, including hypersonic gliders and drone swarms, are rendering traditional defense systems obsolete. Electromagnetic railguns, with their incredible speed, almost laser-like precision, and shot-for-shot -shot economy, offer an answer provided the world's scientists and engineers can master their unforgiving physics. With every new field trial, DRDO brings India closer to realizing this ambition. In essence, the story of DRDO's railgun mirrors the tides of international innovation, stunning scientific progress, ruthless engineering challenges, moments of costly failure, and a relentless drive to break the boundaries between science fiction and weaponized reality. The world's leading railgun programs, America's Golden Dome, China's shipborne behemoths, Japan's precision strike platforms, France and Germany's trilateral advances, all share the same aspirations and headaches. By exploiting global lessons and building on unique indigenous strengths, India's EMRG could soon sit at the world's front rank, not Jew. Sent as a weapon, but as a symbol of the nation's future industrial and strategic mastery.